Here are seven things I would never do as a photographer, and I want you to let me know what I've missed. Number one, and this is as someone who has literally just done this, I would never change camera brand unless I had to. And I will get into the caveats in a bit. I would never change camera brand. I shot Canon for 15 years. Now I shoot Fuji. The reason I changed was because I changed format, which is a valid reason to change. I went from full frame to medium format. If I stayed at full frame, I would never leave Canon. And whilst I'm shooting medium format, I won't leave Fuji. There is occasion where for whatever reason, there is a real issue in your business, which is costing you a fortune because a camera can't do something and a new brand brings out something that fixes that. However, if you're telling yourself that I need to do it because I'll save time and time is money, you are delusional. Unless with that time saved, you're making more money, then no. Of course, if you're rich enough to afford the luxury of buying yourself time, do it. We buy faster computers sometimes, not because time is money, but because I want to go home early. But you only do that when you have enough money to buy time. You know, it's a, it's a thing. Now, the reason we don't change camera brands and even camera models that often is because it's so much hassle. Firstly, you lose money. You always lose money when you change brand. There's no good trade in there. Secondly, you have to learn an entirely new system of menus, which is annoying for some people more than others. I find it infuriating. My digi guy just doesn't care. just seems to get all menu systems instantly. But thirdly, the way you shoot the sensor, the way you grade it, the way you expose it is different. The way that I shoot my Fuji GFX 100S compared to my 5DSR is completely different. Don't do it. Number two, buy brand new gear over used gear. Now, someone will come to me and say, but Scott, if you buy the latest camera second hand, you don't get to claim VAT back and with the tax deductibles and this, 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 you can get it cheapest brand new than you would do second hand. If you're VAT registered, a limited company would tax you. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't go and buy the newest version of the newest camera instead of a second hand, slightly marked down version of it. No. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't buy the newest camera. There is no camera since 2008 that is such an upgrade that you have to go and buy it before the next one comes out. Much like cars, cameras depreciate like it's going out of fashion. Like, I mean, let's take, for example, my 5D Mark IIs were three and a half thousand pounds. I sold them for 200. And someone's going to say, but how much money did you make shooting with them? The same I would have made shooting with something else. I've heard all your smart answers. I've done all the sums. Yes, if you buy a secondhand version of the latest camera and it's not got VAT included on it, yes, it's cheaper to buy it brand new, but don't buy it brand new. Buy a secondhand camera a few generations old. Unless you're super flush with cash, then do it. But if it's all the money you've got, if it's on credit, if it's on finance, and I've heard people try and justify finance within a business, no. Just be sensible. Why make your life harder than it has to be? And of course, if we all buy secondhand all the time, camera brands will go out of business. But don't worry, because much like cars, there's an idiot out there buying a brand new one off the forecourt right now, which will be yours for half the price in a couple of years' time. So don't stress. Next one is living paycheck to paycheck, which is what I did. Now, what I do nowadays is I pay myself a salary. A humble salary, but I pay myself a salary. If I make more money, I don't pay myself more money. I stick to my salary. We don't want lifestyle inflation. We want to keep it nice and simple. I get more joy out of knowing that I can not work for however many years or that I can, you know, live my lifestyle that I choose to without any stress than getting a bigger paycheck each month. It works for me. It might not work for you. Speak to your accountant, though. There's lots of cool things you can do. Number four is taking on jobs that are beneath me. I don't do work that's beneath me. I get offered to go and do talks all the time. I mean, it's always beneath me. There's two reasons why I should do a job. Two, and there's only two reasons to do one. Number one, it's good for me. It's good for my portfolio. It's good for my career. And that can look many different ways. It could be that a small brand has got an amazing brief and thing they want to do, but they've got no budget. That could be really cool. It could be that Vogue want me to shoot the cover of the magazine and I can leverage that to make something cool. It could be that a local college wants me to do a talk. They've got no budget for it. 
but I'd feel really good about myself if I went and helped, which may be as selfish because it's making me feel good about myself. I don't know. I, I toy with that a lot. The other reason is it's a cash cow. And that means it pays me so much money, I do not care. So people ask me to come and do talks all the time and I have to go, what's in it for me? Will I gain anything by doing this? Or am I better off spending my time elsewhere? Is that job beneath my needs right now? Is it paying me so much money that I should go and do it? Or is it not paying me much? It doesn't really offer me anything. So let's just say no. And I say no to probably 75% of requests because they don't fit this criteria. But at the start, I said yes to everything because I was scared of not making enough money. And what actually happened was I didn't make much money, but I was very busy. And that happens to every photographer at some point, which is when you have to start learning your worth. Number five, worry about the numbers on social media. I am fixated on hitting 70,000 subscribers, actually 75,000, but 70 is quite close, on YouTube. I don't know why. It has no meaning. It does nothing. My life does not change, but I'm fixated on it. I worry when I don't get enough likes on an Instagram post. But deep down, I know neither of these two metrics matter. Instagram does not dictate my price as a photographer. My number of followers and likes on a post doesn't make me win or lose a job. On YouTube, maybe there's a slight difference, but to be honest, whether I'm getting a million views a month or 250,000, the amount of money YouTube pays me is insignificant. It's usually below 1,500 pounds a month. It's nothing. And on a bad month, it's 600. It, like, it doesn't matter. Having more views and followers, unless I'm getting Peter McKinnon views, won't change my life in any way whatsoever. But I still fixate on them, and I shouldn't, and you shouldn't either. Now, the final one is something I do all the time. I'm learning to get better at it, but obviously I've created a toxic trait to cope with this, and that is putting my work before my health. Now, doing stuff like this is very good for my health. It's low stress. There's, you know, it's not high energy. I'm not particularly taxing myself physically. Yes, there's prep with the mental side of things of working out what I'm going to say, but really I have a title on a little computer over here and I just ramble. You know, I don't read script or anything like that because I can't. If I read a script, it sounds like, and I would like to, it doesn't work well. So we just ramble. But every time I do a big shoot, it's stressful for many reasons. One is there's client expectation based on the amount of money they're paying you. The more money they're paying you, the more stressful the job is. That's bad. Two is the physical demands of a job. That stress, that inflammation in your body for weeks on end is not good. So now what I do, Instead of trying to, there's, no, there's nothing I can do about the fact I'm going to get beaten and abused by this job that's coming up, this big job. That's going to happen. But I make sure the week after, I do nothing. I come into my studio and I do nothing but nice creative work. Unless there's a job on. I can often back-to-back -back jobs indefinitely, but as soon as they stop, I crash and burn. And my new coping strategy is just to go, well, do you know what? No YouTube videos are happening that week. No meetings, no Zoom calls, no, no nothing. I'm just going to chill out in my studio with my dog. That's how we're doing it. So these, these are the things I will no longer do, or at least I'm trying to change as a photographer. I'd love to hear what yours are. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.